In this presentation, we will examine Claude Shannon's mathematical theory of communications. Specifically, we will look at the noisy channel model. The noisy channel model has important uses in many areas of human language processing, including spelling correction, speech recognition, and machine translation. In the 1830s, Samuel Morse, along with his research collaborators, developed a system for sending sequences of encoded letters and numbers over wired transmission lines via electrical telegraph. One important characteristic of Morse code is its encoding efficiency. On the right-hand side, you see a sorted frequency graph showing how frequently each letter of the English alphabet occurs in typical English text. The most frequent letter by a considerable margin is the letter E, followed by the letter T. In Morse code, these highly frequent letters are encoded using short sequences. The letter E is represented by a single dot, while the letter T is represented by a single dash. The least frequent letters, Q and Z, are encoded using much longer sequences, dash dash dot dash and dash dash dot dot, respectively. In 1924, Harry Nyquist, a researcher at AT&T, formulated an equation describing the speed at which symbols, for example letters in Morse code, can be transmitted over a telegraph line. In 1928, Ralph Hartley generalized Nyquist's earlier work. In Hartley's formulation, H is the amount of information associated with N selections, where S is the number of symbols in the available alphabet. In 1937, Claude Shannon, a master's student at MIT, wrote a paper that would later be described as possibly the most important master's thesis of the 20th century. Shannon's paper examined the symbolic logic of 19th century English mathematician George Boole and illustrated how the application of Boolean logic could be used to profoundly impact electronic circuit design. During World War II, Shannon's work examined the mathematical foundation of communication in the context of cryptography. He continued this line of research after the war, and in 1948 published his seminal work, titled A Mathematical Theory of Communication. Shannon's paper built on the earlier work of Nyquist and Hartley. Shannon linked the concept of entropy which at the time was a well-established concept in physics and thermodynamics, to the realm of communication and information theory. The equation you see here defines the entropy, H, of an information source in terms of the probability distribution of symbols being produced by that information source. Shannon's paper established the generalized formulation of communication in terms of a noisy channel model. In this formulation, communication begins when a message is created at an information source. For our purposes, let's consider a text message written in a human language such as English. The message may be encoded by a transmitter. A good example of this would be a telegraph operator taking a message written in English and encoding it in Morse code. The encoded message is transmitted over telegraph lines. As the message transits the communication channel, imperfections or external factors may cause noise in the electrical transmission, causing the transmitted signal to be altered. At the receiving end, Another telegraph operator receives the encoded signal and decodes the message back from Morse code. 
the decoded message is finally stored as human-readable text. Depending on the noise conditions of the transmission channel, the final error may contain errors. The f sorry, the final message may contain errors. Let's take a look at the components in the noisy channel model. The model begins with an information source, where a text message is composed, written in a human language. Continuing the previous example, let's assume the message is written in English. We'll call that message E. The message is encoded by the transmitter from English into Morse code, sent over the channel, a telegraph wire, and decoded from Morse code back to English by the receiver. We'll call the final decoded message F. Because of noise in the channel, our final decoded message may contain errors. Given our final message F, we would like to reconstruct the original message E. In particular, we would like to find the message E that maximizes the probability of F given E. Whatever message E hat satisfies those conditions will be our best hypothesis for the original message. So, how can we use the noisy channel model to find this best hypothesis? Let's start with a couple of simplifying assumptions. To begin with, we're going to assume an error free transmitter. We're also going to assume an error-free receiver. What does this mean? At the transmitter, this means we have a highly skilled telegraph operator who encodes our English message into Morse code without making any mistakes. Likewise, at the receiver, this means a highly skilled telegraph operator who decodes Morse code back into English without making any mistakes. Given those assumptions, what phenomena may be useful to model? One important component is the English message. By examining a large corpus of English messages, we could construct a probabilistic language model, P of E. Similarly, by examining a large corpus of decoded telegraph messages that may contain errors, we could construct a probabilistic model, P of F, of those messages. Finally, if we have some insight into what causes errors in transmission, we can construct a probabilistic model of the channel, P of F given E. This is great, but none of those three terms appears in the equation above. What we need is a way to redefine our equation in terms of our language models, P of E and P of F, and our channel model, P of F given E. To do this, we're going to make use of an important mathematical law attributed to the 18th century mathematician Thomas Bayes. Bayes's law defines the posterior probability, P of E given F, in terms of the likelihood function, P of F given E, and the prior distributions, P of E and P of F. Bayes' law lets us define P of E given F in terms of the three component distributions which we have available. Given this definition, we can redefine our previous equation in terms of the channel model and the language models. We begin by taking the posterior distribution, P of E given F, and replacing it with the right-hand side from Bayes' law. Now we have an equation that's defined using the channel model and the language models. That's great, but it turns out that we can simplify this equation a bit. 
Recall that we're performing an argmax operation over English messages E. This means that we're looking for the English message E, which maximizes the total value of the equation. Notice that the denominator of the equation is defined only in terms of f. E does not show up in the denominator. So, no matter what value E has, the value in the denominator won't be affected. Because the denominator doesn't affect the argmax operation, we can remove it. This simplifies things a bit, leaving us with an equation that's defined only in terms of the channel model and the English language model. We can take our original equation and in its place substitute our new equation that uses the channel model, P of F given E, and the English language model, P of E. This presentation was created and narrated by Lane Schwartz. You're free to reproduce and adapt this work under the terms of the Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike 4.0 International License. For reference, please see the following primary sources. An Essay Towards Solving a Problem in the Doctrine of Chances by Thomas Bayes, published in Philosophical Transactions of the Royal Society of London, 1763. Certain Factors Affecting Telegraph Speed by Harry Nyquist, published in Bell Labs Technical Journal, 1924. Transmission of Information by Ralph Hartley, published in Bell Labs Technical Journal, 1928. A Mathematical Theory of Communication by Claude Shannon, published in the Bell Systems Technical Journal, October 1948. See also the following secondary sources. The Mathematics of Communication by Warren Weaver, published in Scientific American, July 1949. Mathematical Theory of Claude Shannon by Eugene Chu, Jocelyn Lin, Brock McFerrin, Noshirwan Petagara, Satwik Sai, Shesha Sai, 2001. Image credits. Chart of the Morse Code Letters and Numerals by Ray Snodgrass and Victor Camp, 1922. Daguerreotype of Morse in Paris, 1840. J38 Straight Key Telegraph, Lou Sander, 2007. English Letter Frequencies, Nanda, 2010. Harry Nyquist, American Institute of Physics. Ralph Hartley, Hartley Family. Claude Shannon, George Boole, circa 1860. Thomas Bayes.